Hello, welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. Today, I want to introduce you to the all new 2020 Airstream Caravel 16RB. The Caravel is a series of trailers that comes in the 16RB, 19CB, 20FB, and a 22FB floor plan. The Caravel was a popular trailer series from the 1960s. Our founder, Wally Byam, had a love of the sea and sailing. This trailer is 16 foot two from the center of the ball to the back bumper, and it is eight foot wide on the exterior. The interior width is seven foot seven inches. The exterior height to the top of the air conditioning is nine foot seven inches. Gives you an interior floor to ceiling height of six foot seven and a half inches. The tongue weight, the dry tongue weight before options in cargo is 490 pounds. The unloaded vehicle weight is 3,200 pounds. And the gross vehicle weight rating, that's the most a trailer could weigh, an axle could weigh, is 4,300 pounds. This has a freshwater tank of 23 gallons and a combination gray-black tank of 28 gallons. It has an air conditioning that's 13,500 BTU and a furnace that's 12,000 BTU. That's a force head air propane furnace. It has two 20-pound propane tanks and it features a rear panoramic window. So most of you folks remember the rear panoramic window in the 16-footer from 2004 to 2012 in the Airstream International CCD Signature and Ocean Breeze Series. Well, it's back now and people love it. There's an optional window awning package you could get and an optional 90-watt solar charging system with absorbed glass mat. And there's two batteries on board. There's Group 24 Series 12-volt and parallel. And um, they're upgraded to AGM when you get the solar. The standard would be lead acid. This trailer has 15 inch, it's a 225-75 R15 load range D tires. They're Goodyear Endurance tires. Has never lube hubs and the never adjust braking system. It's a rubber torsion axle by Dexter and uh, has a Zip D awning with the Sunbrella material. And uh, the pricing, base MSRP before options and destinations, $60,900. This has a solar charging system, which is $1,700, and the window awning package, which is $1,350. Destination charge, which is equal for all Airstream dealers in the country, is $1,334, giving you a total MSRP of $65,284. Let's head inside. I want to show you inside the front of the trailer, there's a dinette that's 40 inches wide by 91 inches. You could sit four people here. I'd be two kids and two adults. And it folds down into a bed that will sleep one adult or two kids by removing the bottom cushions, flipping the table down, and using the backrest to squeeze in the middle. And uh, you got pretty much the full width of the trailer. There's two interior decors available. Uh, right now we're in the pewter, which is uh, like a tannish color, like a dark tan. And then there's a tungsten, which is almost black. And on all the cabinetry is plied with laminate, and it's just called Autumn Night. So this is the interior decor of all the car caravels. You just have two different choices of cushions. The tabletop is laminate over plywood, and it's got the soft edge on it. So the edge banding here has a beveled edge to give you a little bit softer feel on your arm. Over here by the entry door, this has an electronic battery disconnect. So when you're done with the trailer and you're going to put it in storage, you could just flip the switch down and that shuts the battery system off. If you have the optional solar charging system, it will still allow the solar to charge the battery. But it's best practice before you ever tow the trailer, use the trailer, or plug the trailer in to flip the battery disconnect on again. There's a, a step light by the entry step on the exterior, that's LED. And then inside, the ceiling lights are all LED and they're recessed on the Caravel series and they're dimmable. So you could turn them on and then you just hold your finger over the little hole here and that will dim it down for you. Or you could tap it on and off. And then the one next to this is for the awning LED light strip. That when we go outside later, I'll show you that. The curtains are two piece and they pull all the way around the front panoramic window. The middle window opens but you have to open up the rock guard which i'll show you when we go outside later and then to open the window you pull the two handles twist and lift evenly on both sides and that there's three different heights to adjust the window over the dinette there's an led light you got one element or two you choose from there's a drawer here that rolls out and you can store items in here there's shoe storage right next to that drawer up front under the dinette, there's a subwoofer that comes uh, 
as part of the sound system, so there's four speakers and a sub. There's a GFCI protected electrical outlet under the dinette, and then it has a propane leak detector that's hardwired to the battery. The flooring is sheet vinyl, it's one sheet of vinyl on top of uh, the plywood floor. There's an LED reading light over the dinette that's adjustable. This is one of the speakers here, and there's two in the bedroom. These slide open. They have aluminum backing to it. Comes with a Sony uh, Blu-ray disc player that also plays DVDs. And a new feature, a JL Audio for 2020. And it's also Bluetooth enabled as well. Really good sound quality that comes out of this stereo system. And it comes with a rubber cover that you could cover it up nice and secure. There's an electrical out here next to the Blu-ray player that also runs off the 1000 watt pure uh, sine wave inverter that um, it comes standard on the Caravelle series. There's two remote controls, uh, one for the television, one for the Blu-ray player. And the backup camera, which we're going to see later outside, this is the, the monitor for it. So it comes with a little monitor you put your tow vehicle, you turn your parking lights on, that will power the monitor. You can see all the traffic behind you. On this side, we have a smoke detector with a 9 volt battery. You got to change that every six months. The Caravelle has ducted air conditioning. So the 13,500B2 air conditioning with electric heat strip is ducted throughout the trailer, it reduces noise level. It's actually called quiet stream for a reason because it's a lot quieter than a central air conditioning system. But you could spin these around, you could shut airflow off to certain vents and favor airflow in a different direction if needed. It has a fantastic fan with a motorized lid, rain sensor, and variable speed control. You go three different speeds. You can set your temperature. And you could have the lid open, but have the fan off if you wanted to. And if it rains, the lid will shut down. And then uh, you'll just have to reset it when um, it stops raining to turn it back on. You can manually crank it up and down too by hand if you go against the motor. There's an overhead roof locker in the galley area with plenty of storage, cooktop ventilation. So you got a light, LED light above, and a vent fan, and uh, you'll see later how that vent opens on the outside. There's an electrical outlet tester that Airstream gives you to check and test your electric that's coming in from the campground. It's best practice to take a look at this, plug it into one of your outlets whenever you plug the trailer in, just to make sure everything is okay. The cooktop it has the heavy-duty high-output uh, cooktop uh, by Contour for 2020, and you just spin it to ignite it's got electronic igniter and then you just uh, check your temperature you could have it high or low and then there uh, for the back is your high output the front is the lower output sink cover is removable some people use these as cutting boards comes with this little tray in the bottom and it's a stainless steel sink and it's very thick gauge mowing residential style faucet ocean air roller shade behind. These are two porthole style windows that don't open. All the windows that open, by the way, have insect screens on them. There's two total in this trailer that open. The water heater is uh, the Atwood uh, XT series, so it's gas and electric. You just choose which side you would like on. If you turn it on gas, if it misfires, a red light will come on to indicate that the water heater misfired. You got air in the system. Uh, something caused it not to ignite. So the red light will never come on unless there's a problem and up is on and down is off. And you could put both on at the same time if you wanted. And it's a six gallon reservoir, but it has a mixer valve and it preheats the water before it brings it into the tank. It gives you nine gallons of continuous flow, hot water uh, off of a six gallon tank. Pretty impressive. This has a sea level two tank monitoring system that allows you to monitor your battery, fresh water tank, and levels of percentage. So most RVs are quarters, one quarter, uh, and then so on. This gives you percentage all over from zero to 100, so it's a little bit more accurate. And then the combination gray-black tank, you can monitor the waste as well, and that gives you the same readings on percentage. This has optional solar charging system, so this is your solar charge uh, display that allows you to see how much battery percentage remaining, how many battery voltage you have, solar voltage you're uh, providing, and your solar amp, uh, charge amps, as well as your solar amp hours. And the charging status, uh, it shows that we are charging right now. There's a privacy screen that pulls across. And that allows, once you get out of the bathroom, an area to get dressed in your wardrobes right here. 
Uh, but it's a cloth material. Ersham did a great job with the designers. The back is a little bit different color. And you just strap that in when you're uh, ready to take off so it doesn't dance around. And there's a little Velcro to keep it in place. These are the intakes for the air conditioning. So this is where the air is going to come in. So it's best practice to clean these filters after every trip. You wouldn't uh, believe how much lint comes off of a towel when you towel down. So if these get clogged, it's going to overwork your air conditioning and could cause failure on the air conditioning. Below the sink, there's a drawer with a silverware organizer. And there's also a plastic piece here for a sponge or a brush. The microwave, it's a regular microwave that you get on the 16-footer. You have to be plugged into shore power in order to power this up. Below that, we have a storage compartment that goes right up to the wheel well, so that's why it doesn't go all the way back. The wheel cuts in just like the bed of a pickup truck. And there's all J-latches to keep everything shut. This is about a five-pound latch to keep this shut. And then all the hardware is premium hardware that's detachable and adjustable. If you take these caps off, you can make adjustments over the years as things settle and move so your cabinets stay square. The Novacool compressor style two-way refrigerator, it's 12 volt or 120 volt electric, uh, is, uh, cools very quickly. I have it on for about an hour and it's uh, already removing a lot of the heat. The uh, thing with this refrigerator, the door looks very small but it's very deep. That's the main advantage of a compressor style refrigerator in the fact that you get a very deep, so you can put a lot of things in that you can't fit in a desorption style refrigerator. This is 3.1 cubic foot, so it's a pretty impressive size. I have the same size on my Airstream. I'm able to load several days of food inside. There's a nice cube tray up top. This top portion is where your freezer is, uh, and then the door has some storage as well. And it has a, a metal latch to keep it shut when you're driving, and then another latch when you're parked you're not level to keep it shut and from the door or preventing the door from opening. Um, while I'm down here I could show you underneath the bed this is your furnace uh, discharge so this is where all the heat's going to come out through the trailer and it also ducks air down into your tanks. There's pass-through storage to get to your rear trunk so you can grab a couple of these bins if you have clothes on board and then you can store them back into the trunk here. Underneath the uh, other side of the bed is the multi-stage battery converter charger. This has all your breakers for your uh, electrical items, has your GFCI resets as well for your wet outlets, and then there's 12 volt fuses, they're ATC style, and they range in amps depending on which item. And there's a label on both to indicate if a breaker popped, which breaker it was, as well as if a fuse blew. There's a LED light next to each one of the fuses to indicate which one uh, failed. And then the bottom portion is your battery charger, so there's a fan that will kick on periodically to cool the charger down. Uh, you never want to put anything really close to this because it could cause the converter charger to overheat and overwork and uh, burn it out. The mattress is a pillow top memory foam mattress. Uh, it's a very thick mattress, about seven and a half inches. And if you lift the mattress up, you can could, you could see the lou on board here. If you're cold weather camping and you have high humidity, you want to lift the mattress and let it air out on a daily basis. Uh, it gives you access to your inverter if you needed to work on the inverter or turn it on and off uh, manually. If there is a remote switch in the galley that you turn on and when you press that button uh, it will take about 10 seconds you'll have uh, your dedicated inverter outs will have electricity up to 100, I'm sorry, 1000 watts. And that's just for temporary use. So if you want to use the Blu-ray player or your television and you're not plugged into campground shore power, you could turn that on for a period of time. Uh, just don't leave it on for a long period of time because you could drain your battery down faster than what the solar could charge it up for. And it's a uh, thousand watts, so no toasters, hair dryers, or coffee makers could go into it. The bedding comes with it, and this is the decor uh, pillows that come with the pewter interior decor. The wardrobe has a light inside so you can illuminate this area at night. Wardrobe rod has some grooves in it so your, your hangers, if you're hanging clothes, don't swing around. I've stored in here the owner's bag that Airstream gives you. Inside is all the owner's manuals for all the components inside the trailer. There's also an owner's manual for the travel trailer itself and there's a newbie's guide in here as well. I'd recommend reading all three. At Colonial Airstream we give all our customers a hands-on comprehensive orientation. We have one of our delivery coordinators go through everything in the trailer with you. It's going to take a few hours to learn everything inside and out. 
And we always welcome our customers after they receive their hands-on orientation to spend the evening in their Airstream at our dealership to try everything out. That way if there's any questions or challenges that come up, we can handle the following morning before you hit the road and head back home. Uh, so I highly recommend uh, booking that if you uh, book your orientation. This is an access panel that gives you access to your water heater. The water heater ha has a bypass built into it for winterization procedure. Our uh, jewelry coordinator will teach you how to bypass it when you winterize the trailer. But this little strap here keeps it up if a uh, technician's working in there. Down below, there's a waste pail that's included, and there's a service access port for the water heater as well. All right. In the bedroom, we have a carbon monoxide detector on the wall, and there's a 9-volt battery you want to uh, check and replace every six months. Down lower, we have the comfort control center. This is for your HVAC. This allows you to operate your rooftop air conditioning, your furnace, your heat pump, the fan in the air conditioning, change your temperature, change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius, uh, and uh, you can set a program. So this is all done from the Comfort Control Center. In the bedroom, there's also uh, ceiling lights, which are dimmable, just like the main ceiling lights. At the head of the bed, there's two separate USB charge ports, and there's two in the inside, so you got four total. This little hamper lifts up, and you can, you can store items in there. You could also put your portable electronic devices in there while you're charging because they leave a little hole here on the side. The rear panoramic view really gives you a vision while you're lying in bed all the way around. So people really are going to enjoy that. The rear window opens at three different heights, but also doubles as an emergency exit. So once you open the window, you're going to pull this cord and it'll relieve the screen and then you could climb out. But I'll show you how this window opens. Pull, twist, pull, twist and lift evenly with both hands. And there's three different heights you could snap it in. You got a high height, medium, and a low. Just be sure to go through your checklist in your owner's manual, or if you download the Airstream to go app, there's a checklist in there, and you wanna make sure that you go through. And one of the things that you wanna check is to make sure your windows are latched before you travel. Above the bed, we have two directional reading lights, one on each side, and the overhead roof locker is really deep. It comes with uh, bed pillows. I have them stored up there currently. And at the foot of the bed, there's a, another inverter outlet that the television's plugged into. The TV can swing all the way around so you can see it from the living area. And you can lock it in when you're done, when you're traveling. The TV's plugged into a cable connection, so when you hook up the cable at a campground, you get reception. And next to that, there's a little button with a green light. That is an antenna booster. There's a TV antenna up on the roof, and what you want to do is you turn the antenna on, and then hit the auto program in the TV, and you can see and scan all the stations you can get in your, in your situation. When you're done watching the TV and we're done with the antenna, you got to make sure, be mindful to turn it off so you don't drain the battery down in the trailer. And the TV's plugged into an HDMI port here on the side. Right here is the bathroom for the trailer. It's a wet bath. And in the wet bath, there's hooks here on the door. So when you're done showering and we're done with your towel, you can hang it up if it's wet and allow it to dry off. On the roof, there's a fan. And you just push up, push the button. And that will exhaust any moisture or stale air outside. The light switch is uh, by the entry door for the bathroom. There's a clothesline in here you can pull across. And it hooks in. And you can hang light items on here, nothing heavy, just to dry them off. Once you get to lock it, lock it in once you're ready. There's a roller shade here for privacy. And then there's a curtain that covers this whole entire wall. And your shower faucet is down below, hot and cold. And the wand hangs on the wall. It's removable. And once you get your temperature and you have the water flow, if you want to conserve water, you could pause it. A little water will dribble out. You can lather up, hang it back up. When you're ready, take it off, turn it back on, and rinse off. And you could really, you could take a shower with very, very minimal water. There's a medicine cabinet here too with removable shelves. And it has a mirror so you could uh, see what you're doing inside. 
And then the toilet is a porcelain bowl. It's got a bowl valve. So when you push on the pedal partially, it allows the bowl to fill up with uh, water. And then once uh, you're, you're ready to use the toilet and you're ready to flush, you push down all the way and it allows the water to flush down and the waste to flush down. When you're done, lift it up and the bowl valve seals it. Down on the floor, there's a drain plug. And so it's best practice to have that in when you're towing so you don't get any tank odor that could spill out of the P-trap. There is a stainless steel threshold here. The bottom pan is fiberglass. The top portion is a water resistant laminate. And there's just a few seams that you'll have to maintain caulking over the years. Shower curtain. This pulls across and seals the gap at the entry door. I have it tied up on the bottom so it doesn't drag the floor. And then it's always a, a good idea when you're done showering to take the towel and just wipe down inside of the bathroom so forever is going to use it next. It's nice and dry for them. Over by the entry door, we have some hooks here for some coats. And we have uh, the dry erase board. It comes with a little marker, a magnet, and then you could take pictures to these little magnets and have them up here. There's a rubber bumper by the entry door just in case you forget the duck. Uh, so you don't skim your head. Let me just bring this door around so you can see when the door is shut, you get plenty of light through this area too, but you also get your privacy. Let's head outside. I want to show you all about the outside of the trailer. The trailer has a screen door, which is all aluminum, TIG welded. It's got stainless steel hinges with six rivets. I close it. There's a nice gasket. This uh, keeps a uh, the gap so bugs don't fly in. The door has a, aluminum sheathing on the back and it's insulated all with equal bad insulation throughout the whole trailer and the underbelly is insulated with uh, flex foil insulation wrapped in aluminum and the tanks uh, with your furnace has a forced hot air tank heating system. Gives you about a seven degree boost in temperature in the tank. The door has a uh, screen door guards on the Caravel series, a deadbolt lock and an entry door lock. And it's a very secure bank vault shut. There's a window in the entry door. It's tinted. Heavy duty uh, cast aluminum hinges. Belt line protection here. The bottom rub rail protection has a tooly step that slides in and pulls out. It's spring loaded. You can do it with your foot in and out. At the threshold of the door, there's a extruder aluminum piece here that allows you to sweep the floor out easily to get over this lip and this uh, aluminum extrusions for the door frame is all uh, TIG welded here and all buck rivet all the way around. There's aluminum grab handle and aluminum gutter rail over the entry door. Uh, tires we spoke about earlier, the Goodyear Endurance tires, it's recommended at max load to go to 80 psi. It's very important to check your tire pressure every time you hook up to the trailer. It's uh, best practice to do so. You also want to check your lug nut torque and follow the recommendations in the owner's manual. If you ever remove the tire and put it back on, you want to check your lug nut torque after 5, 10, 25, and 50 miles just to make sure that they're on secure. There's an outside GFCI protected electrical outlet. This outlet will only work when you're plugged into shore power at the campground. There's your uh, Caravel medallion. There's an aluminum medallion that's milled and uh, painted. This is the catch for the entry door. And for the bathroom, there's two porthole uh, windows here. Uh, previous model years on the Sport, there used to be a pass-through for the shower wand. You could pull it out of the bathroom. Now there's an exterior shower port on the road side of the trailer. This is uh, the curb side of the trailer. Rear panoramic window is uh, slightly tinted. You have double stacked LED tail lights, LED running lights all the way around, and it has uh, come standard with a wireless backup camera with a monitor. It comes with a removable monitor that you can plug into your 12 volt charge port in your vehicle. And as long as you turn on your parking lights, that powers the camera up top and gives you a rear view the whole time while you're driving on the highway. It gives you that peace of mind. If you're just about to pass someone, you want to make sure you cleared them, you can look in your camera and make sure uh, that you did clear them. Polished aluminum rear bumper with bumper caps on the end for protection so you don't scuff your pants on it. Rear bumper lid lifts up and it comes with a mat inside. There's holes drilled in the bottom to allow water 
uh, drain out, but you can stick blocks of wood, wheel chocks, power cord, anything that has ground contact that might get a little bit dirty. Instead of putting it in here in your trunk, you can put it in your back bumper storage. License plate bracket with light, another uh, beautiful Caravelle medallion. Lockable and insulated weather sealed storage compartments. Insulation in between here, gasket here. And then it comes with the bins that uh, there's a, a total of eight bins you get and they are passed through. You can get them to the inside of the trailer if you open up the compartment doors. You can see it's all plywood with laminate so no particle board in the construction. And it has a tongue and groove 5 8 inch plywood floor with an outdoor exposure rating. And the ex on the uh, subfloor they put the vinyl floor on top and they hand carry all the furniture inside. The plywood floor has an anti-wicking substance painted to the whole entire perimeter. So if you left this open in the rain and water did get in and it went below the vinyl flooring, it's not going to wick it through your whole entire trailer. Repel it and hopefully drip it out of your underbelly. The window awning option is highly recommended. Beautiful sunbrella material. The strap rolls up and Velcros in place. To bring the awning up, you just pull down, swing these around and roll it up and it's got a, a nice aluminum cover on here to protect your awning you don't scuff it and all the glass is uh, tempered glass it's safety glass the rear window also doubles as an emergency exit so if you needed to get out in an emergency uh, you could do a quick release with the screen and climb out of the window Alcoa aluminum you want to wash it wax it regularly you also want to keep it away from road salt. If you do get road salt on the Airstream trailer, you want to power wash the trailer and the underbelly and all your seams here and put a nice protective coat of wax on board. This trailer has a 30 amp service, 125 volt. We give you a 25 foot power cord. This uh, power cord will line up, okay, twist and then you put the little lock on it and that will keep it weather tight and then Colonial Airstream gives you a 30 amp to a 15 amp power cord adapter so this is what you'd plug in when you go to a campground use their 30 amp you use everything in the trailer um, not everything at once but everything in the trailer will be usable including the air conditioning if you want to use the trailer at home and you want to plug it in you only have a, a 15 or 20 amp outlet you plug this adapter in Plug this in and then you can use your microwave, your electric water heater, charge the trailer batteries, but you're not going to be able to run the air conditioning off of this adapter. And we give you a better adapter that is not prone to melt like the little block adapters would be. Below that we have where you'd hook into campground's cable connection. You could also hook a portable satellite dish outside and then bring a receiver and wire it in on the inside. Caravelle comes with heavy duty stabilizer jacks with a tool to crank them down. There's four total, two in the back and two in the front uh, corners. The 28 gallon combination gray black tank, you take the cap off, you might get a little residual drip. Then you come up to your waste hose storage tube. Colonial gives you a 10 foot uh, waste hose and then you can put a 10 foot extension on it will still fit in that tube. This snaps on. Okay, and then you can go to a campground and we give you some rubber gloves just because it's not going to be uh, clean after you use it the first time. You could screw this into their connection or if their threads are stripped you could use this donut and then you snap your hose into it and it's uh, pull the handle straight out allow the waste to gravity drain out. You might get some residual waste in your waste hose. So when you're done, after you close it, you could unsnap it and lift it up high to allow the waste to flow through. You could also exercise and use your black tank flush. It's labeled here. You could hook up a regular garden hose, not your fresh water hose, to it after the tank's open and emptied. Turn on the water and inside the tank, there's a wand that will spray the walls of the tank out, down and get all that residual waste out of your waste hose. So it's best practice to exercise that when you're done camping, you're going to put it away in storage, you can flush your tank so you don't come back to a trailer that might have a little bit of odor.
There's also light here, so you can illuminate this area at night. It's LED. And there's specific jack locations on this trailer. So if you were to get flat tire, you're going to use the bottle jack from your tow vehicle, jack the trailer up exactly where it says jack, and there's a metal plate that lines up. There's one on each back corner of the trailer. Get it up high enough so you get your tire off. If your vehicle's uh, lug wrench is not compatible, you want to make sure you purchase one that you could remove the tire on your trailer. And it comes standard with a spare tire, which you're going to see in a moment. This is the uh, 12,000 BTU furnace exhaust. Don't park the trailer next to any combustibles because it will get very hot here. And just uh, caution your kids if you're playing around it when the furnace is on. The fresh water hose is 25 foot that Colonial Airstream gives you. The Airstream has a water pressure regulator built right into the city water inlet. So when you go to a campground, you can hook this hose right to the trailer, or you can use an inline water filtration system that you could buy after market and uh, filter all the water before it comes in. This little cap comes off, and you just clamp the hose on using this piece right here. There's a drip tube in this wheel well for your air conditioning. So when the condensation builds up in the pan and the air conditioning, you'll have a drip coming out right in front of this tire here of condensation. Don't be alarmed, that's the, how it's designed. Most RVs, the water just runs down the roof and down the sides and stains the RV. Airstream puts in the effort, extra effort and puts a drain tube in. The outside shower, which is new on the 16-footer for 2020, because it's a full outside shower, not a pass-through. You take the wand, you hang it up here, you got hot and cold water. And you want to make sure when you winterize the trailer, if you're in areas where you get below freezing temperature and you follow the procedure in the owner's manual, uh, that you don't forget to winterize your outside shower and either use compressed air or blow any freeze through. The side window awning, this little strap hooks onto this hook here and it rolls up. That's also metal wrapped. And there's a lock in place that you could use your awning tool, which is on the other side of the trailer, to lock it when you're going on the highway. If you could reach it, that's great. You pull this down and it hooks right on, and it shades the whole side of the trailer to really keep the temperature down inside. I think they look really cool as well. I highly recommend ordering those as an option. On the 16 RV in the Caravelle series, there's a cooktop ventilation. On the Bambi series, which is new for 2020, uh, you'll use the roof fan that's in the trailer, 14 by 14 roof fan. A 23 gallon freshwater tank has a lockable compartment. You stick your key in and you take the cap off. You can take your fresh water hose and stick it in there. Turn the water on light and that will allow your tank to fill. And when it's filled, it will relieve out of here. It will also allow the air to escape so the tank fills up better. When you're done, just lock your compartment up. Below this, we have your tire information, tire safety. It gives you your tire size, your load ranging, as well as your recommended PSI. It also has the VIN number for the trailer and production dates on it. So if you ever have any questions on uh, load capacity or tire capacity, you want to check this label here. You can see under the trailer, it's completely enclosed in uh, aluminum. And there's a gap between the floor and the underbelly, a little crawl space there and it's insulated with the flex foil insulation I mentioned earlier. Around the front on the Caravelle series, you get stainless steel wrap protectors. If you're gonna use a truck that has a heavy, uh, pretty aggressive tire tread, uh, this will protect the body from rocks that kick up. They're also hingeable, and you could take the nuts off and swing it out, and you could clean leaves and debris from behind. You could also wax the body as well. Uh, so I, I recommend doing that as your normal maintenance. The front panoramic window has solar stone guards on it. They're also rock guards. And you just pull the tethers and you lift up and you could spin these little neural knobs in place and adjust your height. Once you get your height adjusted, it'll allow you to open the window to three different desired heights. The corners are removable. You take a Phillips head screwdriver, turn a quarter turn, it will unsnap it and it's on a hinge and you could slip it off, lay it on the ground, you could clean your glass as well. I don't recommend removing them for any reason except for uh, cleaning the glass. The 20 pound propane tanks, we at Colonial will have them filled for you upon delivery. There's a wing nut up top that you're going to undo and what this will allow 
is the bottle cover to be removed so you can take your tanks out and get them either exchanged, you could exchange them, or refilled. So you just take the cover off. Just be careful on a windy day, you don't want that to blow around. And then you move the clamp over and make sure the tank's off. You can take it out just like that. And then there's a regulator in between the two tanks that allows you to switch from this tank to this tank. And there's a little gauge that goes from green to red. So right now it's showing that the tanks are empty because this trailer hasn't been prepped yet. If you have both tanks on and this tank was to deplete its propane, it will automatically internally switch to this tank and continue running. It will still leave it pointed to this tank with the little arrow and it'll still be red to let you know that this tank has been emptied and alert you that you need to get it filled. And it's always uh, best practice to travel with your propane tanks off. New for 2020 on the Caravelle series, Airstream uses a compressor style Novacool refrigerator that runs off a battery when it's parked and it'll run off electricity when you're plugged into shore power. So there really should be no reason to want to have your propane on when you're traveling. Up front we have an electric hitch jack that comes standard. You could lower or raise the height, get it on and off your vehicle. There's also a light here to illuminate this area at night. And then the trailer comes with a manual crank, so you can manually crank the jack up and down just in case you had battery malfunction. Also new for 2020, we have the Demco coupler. So it's a composite coupler instead of metal. So there's no metal to metal, so you don't have to worry about the paint rubbing off. And it's a two and five sixteenth inch ball. Because this trailer has a 490 pound tongue weight, it's highly recommended to purchase an aftermarket weight distribution kit that uh, not only will distribute the weight properly, get some weight back onto the front axle of your vehicle, it also will provide some sway control. We have those available in our parts department. This has 11,000 pound safety chains that you're gonna crisscross when you hook up to your tow vehicle. And this trailer has electric brakes, so you wanna make sure your vehicle has a seven-way trailer harness on the back. And it's also very important to make sure that it has a 12-volt charge lead built into it that allow your alternator to charge the trailer when you're going down the highway. Um, our electric brake controller is required by law, so since the trailer has brakes, you gotta make sure they work. So you're, if your vehicle does not have an electric brake controller built in from the factory, you're gonna have to put one in aftermarket, whether you go wired or wireless. And we have those in our parts and service department as well. Trailer breakaway cable, you're never gonna wanna pull this out just for inspection reasons because when you pull this out, it actually activates the trailer brakes. The magnets are on and it's rapidly draining your battery system and it could burn the magnets out. So it's best practice to inspect the cable, but not to pull this out and leave it out. And this has to be securely fastened to the tow vehicle. So if the trailer ever was to come disconnected unexpectedly, it would lock the trailer brakes so the trailer doesn't pass you in the highway. This is a boxed frame, it's hand painted by Airstream instead of a C-channel frame like a lot of other tra travel trailers have, so it's a very rigid frame structure. Standard, it comes with a ZAMP port up front that you could use an optional aftermarket ZAMP solar panel. You plug it right in here. The solar panel would have its own charge controller built in and it'll trickle charge your battery. If you have the solar charging system and you plug anything into this, in addition to what's there, it will shut the factory solar charging system down and allow you to use your portable panel instead. Once you unplug, the solar charging system will take back over. That's uh, available as an option. Spare tire is located underneath. It's cradled underneath for a lower center of gravity. It also protects the tire from UV rays. You just pull the pin out, slide the other one across. Okay. Drop it down and you use your electric hitch jack to raise the trailer up so you can get to it. There's no clamp system, it's just cradled in there and it's a steel wheel and it's the same size and load range as the tires that are on the trailer. And you want to make sure you check your tire pressure on your spare as best practice because you don't want to get a flat and realize that your spare tire is flat as well. The VIN plate is riveted right to the battery box in the trailer. So if you want to ever want to locate uh, another spot for your VIN, there's several spots in the trailer. This is a very clear one if you have to get a VIN inspection. Back on this side, trailer comes with a propane quick disconnect. 
So you could uh, put this into a low pressure grill. It's very important, you have to check the specs on the grill. Make sure it's compatible with low pressure. If it is, you can hook it up, and then you take this end off, and it's got a quick release, and you snap it right in, pull the collar back, snap it in, you can turn the gas on, and you can cook outside. And they give you uh, this length, which is about three foot, because they don't want you to drag the grill around and cook underneath the awning side of the trailer. So it's for your safety, the reason why they give you this size hose. Back behind the propane tanks, we have the batteries. And I'll uh, go over again. Because this has the optional solar charging system, the batteries were upgraded from lead acid to absorb glass mat. So there are two uh, Group 24 series, 12 volt, lifeline batteries. They're 80 amp hours a piece in parallel. And there's no caps to check water level. There's really no maintenance on it except for inspect the terminals for corrosion. I do highly recommend that as an option as well. This Airstream has a three-year warranty. Uh, that's uh, parts and labor from anything that Airstream manufactures at their plant in Jackson Center, Ohio. On the roof, there's a radio antenna, a black rubber antenna that sticks up. Behind that is a dome for a fantastic fan. Behind that is your TV antenna and the Dometic rooftop air conditioning. The awning has a very specific procedure to get the awning down. You want to check the weather, make sure it's not too windy out, make sure there's no storms coming through the area. If you're going to leave for the day, put the awning away, and before you operate the awning, make sure your entry door is shut. Once you're ready, you spin this little wheel that sits in a cup around, push in, the wheel will drop down. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Twist. Pull. Once you get this in hand's reach, drop the awning tool. You want to make sure you have good grip on it because it's spring-loaded. Once you get it down, you're going to walk down to the end holding it and you're going to remove the rafter arm that sits on a little perch over here and it's going to snap in at the end of the roller wheel. Just hooks right in. Don't be tempted to put it here. That's incorrect and you'll damage the awning. Once you get it there, you've got to continue holding it down and you're going to pull and lock it in place. So this little pin sits in notches and gives you a lot of tension to this awning to keep it nice and firm. So I'll do that again. Put this on. Snap it in place. Now what we're going to do is walk down to the other side, being mindful that this side might want to go up. Bring this over, snap it in, and lock it. Now we can adjust the height. It's easier if you come on the inside and you push a hand on the bottom of the awning roller wheel and pull this out and you keep this straight. If you start pulling it crooked, these two bars are not going to expand. So keep it straight. And since this trailer is so short, we can only go up to the third notch. There's one more hidden in here before we have to do the other side. We have to even it out first. And then I brought that one up to four. I could bring this one up to four. You just want to uh, be mindful to remember to rhyme four by the door. You need to be at the highest setting, number four, by the door, so the door clears the awning so it doesn't rub. And then what you can do is you can roll this up nice and neat. And there's a little pouch it sticks in. And if you look up top, there's an LED light strip that illuminates. It's also dimmable at night. And that's uh, on the Caravel series, Flying Cloud and Up, you get that. Well, I hope you enjoyed my tour of the all-new 2020 Airstream Caravel 16RB. This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream. Our website is colonialairstream.com. Our telephone number is 800-265-9019. You can follow me on Facebook. I'm Colonial Patrick. I'll see you soon.